All right, welcome back guys. So in the last video, we saw how we can log in and store an HTTP only cookie that'll hold our access and refresh tokens. Now we need a way to log out. So let's go ahead and see how we can implement that functionality. So back in my code, I'm still running my front end and I'm still running my back end. So make sure you're doing the same. And then I'm gonna close up some of these files that I don't need right now, which is pretty much all of them. And then what I'm gonna do is first off, I'm gonna create an API endpoint for logging out. So it's gonna be API account and then logout. So I'm gonna name this logout.js. And when we hit this route, we're gonna log out. So one thing I'm gonna need inside of here is that cookie package. So that's coming from cookie. And then I'm gonna export my default async request response. And then this logout, I'm gonna expect it to be a post request. So I'm gonna do if request.method is equal to post. Then in that case, I'm gonna do this request. Otherwise, if it's not a post request, then I'm gonna do what I've been doing before where I do the set header, allow, and then post. And then I return a response.status of 405, and then pass back some JSON. We're just going to have an error with the back ticks where it just says method request.method not allowed. So that way we're only allowing post requests. And then in the case where we do get a post request, then what I'm going to do is response.set header set cookie. And then I'm going to have a list where then I'm going to adjust my access and refresh tokens. So let's take a look at our login right now. So with our login, we had something that looked like this, where we had our access is the access token, and then we set some properties and same thing with the refresh. So to make this a little easier, I'm gonna copy these two right here and we're gonna adjust them. So back in here between this array, I'm gonna post both of these cookie.serialize, and then instead of data.access, I'm just gonna have an empty string like so. I'm gonna have the same thing with refresh, so I'm gonna modify these values. And then here is where that expires property comes in handy. So instead of max age, what I can do is I can have expires. And then I can set that to new date zero. So this right here is gonna set the expire. And then this date zero, it's gonna be January 1st, 1970. So that's gonna make sure that this is well over expired and then we can't send over this access and refresh token. So I'm gonna have the exact same thing inside of my refresh. So I'm gonna copy this and then instead of this max age, I'm gonna have this expires new date zero. So this is where this expires property can come in pretty handy. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is just return a response. So I'm gonna return a response with a status of 200. So here we're not making any kind of request to our Django backend API. We're just removing the values from our access refresh token and making them expired. That's all we're really doing here. And then I'm also gonna pass some JSON data with a success. And it's just gonna say successfully logged out. And I also have to make sure I have an F here. So it says successfully, there we go. So now we have this logout endpoint in place. So the next thing I'm gonna do is create my action creator. So I can close this up. Then I can go into my actions. I'm gonna open up my types and auth.js. So first off, I'm gonna make a dispatch type for logging out, and then I'll put this right below, say my login. And then to make this easier, I'm just gonna copy the login success, login fail, paste it below here. And then I'm gonna highlight this login part, do a command D three times to select these login portions and then do log out. That way I have log out success and log out fail. I'm gonna save that. Go into my auth.js inside of my actions folder go right to the bottom and create a logout action creator. So here I'm gonna do export const logout with an async dispatch. And then I'm gonna have my try catch where I make my API request. And then inside of this try part, I can do const response is equal to await fetch. And then my endpoint's gonna be API slash account slash logout because here we have API account logout. And then I'm gonna pass some properties to this. We have to make sure that the method is post. And then I'm gonna have my headers, which in my case, I'm just gonna have an accept header 
just going to be application slash JSON. And then I'm not going to have any kind of body. And then what I'm going to do is check if the response dot status is 200. That means that this was successful. So I'm going to dispatch my logout success. So I'm going to do a type of logout success. Then I also have to make sure I import these dispatch types in this file. So I'm also going to go to the top and right below this login to do my logout success and logout fail. Just to make sure I have these in here, go back down. And then I'm going to have an else where then instead I'm going to dispatch my fail case. So I'm going to paste this in here, change it to be fail. And I'm going to have the exact same thing in the catch. And there we are. And then another thing you can always do is have the set auth loading and remove auth loading like we've been doing in the login and register. And then if you want to have some kind of loader when you click on logout, you can have that. But in my case, I'm just going to leave that out and have my action creator for logging out look just like this. So now I can close up these files. I can open up my auth reducer and then I can bring in these two new dispatch types. So logout success and logout fail. And now let's go ahead and handle these dispatch types. So I'm going to handle them right below the login fail. So I'm going to do a case for logout success. And then for a logout success, I'm going to have spread operator on state. And then I'm just going to set the is authenticated piece of Redux state to be false because we're no longer authenticated. And I'm going to have the case for logout fail, where in that case, I'm just going to return spread operator on state. So I'm not going to adjust the state in any way if this fails to happen for whatever reason. So now that we have that in place, the next step is going to be to adjust our nav bar. Because right now what we want is when we're authenticated to show the logout button as well as the dashboard. And when we're not logged in, I don't want to show the dashboard button, but instead I want to have the register and login button. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to have some logic and then I'm going to check if is authenticated is true. If that's the case. I'm going to show my dashboard and logout button. So I'm going to have something like auth links, which I'm going to define, and that's going to return the JSX, which is going to be those two buttons. Otherwise, I'm going to have guest links, which is going to be my register and login. And then I also have to make sure I bring in this is authenticated inside of here. So I'm going to go to the top of this file. And then what I need to do is import my use selector and use dispatch, which is coming from React Redux. So the use selector is going to be so I can grab that is authenticated piece of state and this use dispatch so that I can dispatch that logout action creator. And then here I can do const dispatch and use dispatch. So that way I can actually dispatch that action creator. And then I can also bring in my logout action creator. So I'm going to import logout, which is coming from my actions auth. So now what I'm going to do is right below here, I'm going to bring in my is authenticated piece of Redux state. So it's going to be equal to my use selector and then state arrow function, then state dot auth dot is authenticated is where I'm going to grab that from. So now I have access to this value over here. And now I need to define this auth link. Actually, I'm going to call this auth links. So auth links and guest links. So right above this return is where I'm going to define these. So const auth links. And then here I'm just going to return JSX. And then this is going to be equal to the dashboard link and the logout link. So then between here, I can have a fragment where then I have these two links. So to make this easier, I'm going to copy these two list items here. I'm actually going to cut them. And then first of all, I'm going to do my const guest links. Have my fragment. And then paste these between here. So then that way, when is authenticated is false, then we're going to return these guest links which is going to be these two list items. So it's going to be the exact same thing we had before. And then with this auth links to make this easier, I'm going to paste this in here as well. And then I'm just going to adjust this. So first I'm going to have the dashboard and then here I'm going to have slash dashboard. And then also I'm noticing there's an extra space here. So I'm going to remove that extra space. So then here, when we click this dashboard, we're going to go to slash dashboard. And also we're going to have that active class when we're on the dashboard page. And then we're also going to have our logout button. In this case, this is not going to be a link. So I'm just going to have an anchor tag in this case. The anchor tag is going to have the text of logout. I'm not going to have this right here. Instead, what I'm going to have is just the class name of nav dash link. 
and I'm going to put this on separate lines. And then I'm also going to have an href, which is just going to be a shebang. And then I'm also going to have an on click. So that way, when you click this, then I'm going to do that logout. So I'm going to make a function called logout handler. So I'm going to define this right above here. So const logout handler. And then what this logout handler is going to do is it's going to check if dispatch and dispatch doesn't equal null and dispatch doesn't equal undefined. If that's all the case, then I'm going to do my logout and then I have to make sure I dispatch this. So there we are. So now our logout functionality should be fully implemented. So now I can refresh and now I have the register and login. So if I go to login, so I'm going to do John Doe one, put in my password and then I'm redirected to my dashboard. And then I see the dashboard and the logout button. And then when I click this logout, I should get logged out. So if I click this, now I see the register and the login. Now, of course, I also need some functionality to protect this dashboard route. So that way, if we're not logged in, then this dashboard route could redirect me to something like the login page. And then another issue we have is that, say, when I go to log in, so right now I'm logged in, but if I refresh the page, I'm logged out. So that's another issue that we have. We need a way to check if we're authenticated and then retrieve our access and refresh tokens and have them inside our HTTP only cookies. And then another thing I just want to show before I wrap up this video is if we open up our application and then go into our cookies. If I go and log in, so I'm going to log in with my John Doe one. And then here you can actually see the access and refresh tokens. So if I click on this access and then I'm also going to expand this a little bit so you can see the actual value of the access token. You can see the path right here. You can see when it expires and then you can also see this HTTP only property, which has this check mark. And then secure, we have this as false right now because we don't want to use HTTPS. You can also see the same site property. So you can see all of this inside of this application section. And then you can also see your refresh token as well. So we have both of these successfully stored as HTTP only cookies. And then we also have responsiveness, which is nice. So I can again, see my dashboard logout, and then I can click this logout and I get logged out. So there we are. So that's going to be everything for this video. And then in our next video, we can see how we can make an authorized request to retrieve our user. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, please hit that like button. It goes a long way to help a channel like mine grow and get recognized so others can benefit from the videos I release as well. Also, I have links in the description that you can check out. I have one for an e-commerce course that you can check out if you're interested in learning to develop an application like that. I also have a link for joining my Web Development Kings Facebook group. That way, if you want to personally ask me something and you can go right ahead and do that, and I will happily help you out. It doesn't cost you anything. So if you're scratching your head about something, then you can go right ahead and ask me to help you out. The only questions I probably won't answer are if you want me to help you build some kind of personal project, as I don't quite have the time for that sort of thing. You can also post something in the group itself. That way, other developers in the group can help you out with something as well. The group is all about growing your expertise as a developer. So if you're interested in that, then go ahead and click that link in the description and join the family. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notification bells. That way you don't miss out when I release a new video and I'll see you in the next one.